Hello, I'm Anthony Vaughn with the product marketing team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. And I'm Sunil Oak with TI's Hercules Safety Microcontroller Applications Team. Today, we're going to introduce you to the clock monitor incorporated into TI's Hercules TMS570 and RM48 safety microcontrollers. We will also show you how to configure this module using Halcogen, TI's tool for generating initialization and peripheral driver code for Hercules MCUs. Any comprehensive safety architecture must start with a solid foundation. Ensuring functional clocks and detecting frequency drift is key to a microcontroller. Sunil is going to give us an overview of the clock monitoring modules integrated into the Hercules architecture. The clock monitor circuitry is specifically designed to detect and report problems with the clock signals in the MCU. There are four primary components integrated into the Hercules architecture designed to ensure clock integrity. These include the external clock prescaler, the oscillator monitor, the PLL slip detector, and the dual clock compare module. The external clock prescaler outputs a clock signal that is representative of the CPU clock frequency. This signal can be externally monitored. The oscillator monitor constantly checks the frequency supplied to the MCU via the external crystal to ensure that it stays within an acceptable range. If it ever deviates from that range, the oscillator monitor can reset the MCU or automatically switch the MCU to utilize an internal low power oscillator. The PLL slip detector constantly monitors the PLL and if it ever detects a loss of lock, will either reset the MCU or switch the clock source to the internal low power oscillator or the external crystal. The dual clock compare module is used to measure the frequency of a clock signal by using a second clock signal as a reference. This can be used to ensure that the two clock sources always stay within a fixed frequency ratio. If either clock deviates, the module will detect and report the problem to the central error signaling module in the microcontroller. Sunil and I are now going to demonstrate how to configure the oscillator monitor using Halcogen. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area of the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD that's included in all Hercules USB development stick kits and Hercules development kits. In this exercise, we are going to configure the MCU PLL to multiply the external 16 MHz crystal frequency by a factor of 10. Then we configure the MCU to blink one of the LEDs on the board once per second. Next, we will configure the error signaling module to report clock monitor errors and revert to using the 10 MHz internal low power oscillator as the MCU clock source upon an oscillator failure. For this exercise, we will need a Windows PC, either the 570LS31 USB stick a RM48 USB stick or the Hercules development kit. We will also need a wire, a 1K pull-down resistor, Halcogen, and Code Composer Studio. The first step is to launch Halcogen. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Windows or Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all the generated code to be stored. The next step is to navigate to the PLL tab in Halcogen. In PLL1, we need to ensure that the reset on oscillator fail box is not checked. This will configure the MCU to revert to the internal low power oscillator when an oscillator failure is detected. The next step is to take note of the PLL1 settings, which by default are set to 160 megahertz. The next step is to go to the Driver Enable tab in Halcogen and select the RTI and GIO drivers. These drivers will be used to blink our LED. Then we need to go to the VIM Channel 0 through 31 tab. In this tab, we need to enable VIM Channel 2 and map it as an FIQ. This will enable the interrupt in our real-time Compare Module 0 channel. Then we will go to the RTI tab and select the RTI Compare sub tab. In this section, we will enter a value of 1000 milliseconds into Compare 0. This will configure the RTI to generate an interrupt once every 1000 milliseconds, or once every second. The next step is to configure the error signaling module. To do this, we go to the ESM tab and select the ESM channel 0 through 31 sub tab. Then enable channel 11, which is the clock monitor channel. The final configuration is in the LPO, or low power oscillator tab. In this tab, we ensure that the high-frequency LPO is set to 10 MHz. The last step in Halcogen 
is to generate code by selecting File, Generate Code. I will now walk through the procedure of implementing this project in Halkogen and Code Composer Studio. The first step in Halkogen is to create a new project. Within here, you open up the uh, specific device that you're going to be using and enter a project name. We'll call this one LPO. And tell it to go ahead and create our directory. The next step is to go to the uh, PLL configuration tab. Inside here, we check to make sure that the uh, PLL1 setting is set to 160 megahertz. The next step is to go to the driver enable tab. And inside here, we need to make sure that the RTI and GIO drivers are selected. So we can choose uh, unselect all and then go in and select those two drivers. These are what we're going to use to blink our LED. The next step is to go to the VIM channel 0 through 31 and enable channel 2 and map it as a FIQ. The next step is to go to the RTI tab. Inside here, we need to go to the RTI1 compare subtab. And inside here, change the compare zero period to 1,000, which translates into one second. That's the time base which we're going to use to blink our LED. The next step is to go to the error signaling module tab. And inside here, choose the ESM channel 0 through 31 subtab and scroll down to channel 11, which is the uh, clock monitor interrupt. And we enable that. The very last step is to go to the LPO, or low power oscillator, tab. And inside here, we check to make sure that our low power oscillator frequency is set to 10 megahertz. The very last step into Halkogen is to generate code. That will generate all the files that we need for our project. Now we're going to launch Code Composer Studio. The next step is to use Code Composer Studio. Inside Code Composer Studio, we need to create a new Code Composer Studio project. We first need to give our project a name. We'll call it LPO. And then we need to configure our device. The default family is ARM. We need to select our variant, which is type of Cortex-R. And then we need to choose our specific device. For this particular example, we're using the TMS570LS3137 device. Then the last step is to choose the connection type. We're going to select Texas Instruments XDS100 version 2 USB emulator, since that's the type of JTAG emulator integrated into our development board. Then we click Finish. That will create our project for us. Inside the Project Explorer, we expand our project. And the next step is to delete the main.c file that Code Composer automatically creates for us. Since we're going to be using the programs that were created by Halkogen, we do not need this main.c file. The next step is to configure a few properties in our project. We select Properties. And then we expand the ARM compiler section and choose Include Options. Then we need to add all of the include files that Halkogen created for us. The last configuration needs to be made in the Debug section. Here we choose our TMS570LS3137 flash settings and ensure that Necessary Sectors Only is selected. Then we click Apply and OK. The next section is to edit some code in our sysmain.c file. This is where our main function is included. Inside user code begin at zero, we need to include all of the header files that we'll be using. I have those pre-written and I'm going to copy and paste them in here. So we need to include our RTI, our HET, and our ESM header file. The next section is going to be inside user code begin 3, which is inside our main function. And I have some code pre-written that I will paste into this section. Inside here, we initialize our RTI 
and we initialize our error signaling module. Then we also set up our high end timer port that's going to be used uh, to blink the LED. Then we also configure the real time interrupt and we enable our FIQ. And then we start our RTI counter. Then we go into an infinite while loop or a while one. The very last bit of code that we need to enter is inside user code begin four. This is where interrupts are handled inside our project. Since we're using our real time interrupt or our RTI to generate our one second time base, we're going to generate an interrupt and this is going to be the interrupt service routine where we toggle our general purpose IO or our high end timer pin. The rest of the code is here. Uh, it's not going to be needed, but it's needed to compile the code. That's all of the changes that we need to make in our main file. The next step is to compile and load the program into our flash memory. We do that by selecting run debug. This will compile and load our code after we save our changes. Now that we have loaded the code on our microcontroller, Sunil is going to use the pull down resistor to disrupt the crystal on the USB stick. We see that the error signaling module has reported the oscillator failure indicated by the red LED and the rate at which the white LED blinks has slowed considerably. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on TI.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can download software like Halkogen, NowFlash, and the High End Timer Integrated Development Environment. You can also order development kits through the TIE store from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer Support Forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs, in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted to this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The wikis contain useful information like development kit, board schematics, and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.